All right, I am back with the last little bit for Suki. These are her final facial details. I'm going to zoom it in and try to get it centered so I can get a really good view of her. Um, for this one, I'm going to use three colors, the yellow, and maybe purple actually too. I'll, I'm not sure about that one yet, but I'll, this is the bright red that I did the rest of her with, so I'm going to do a little bit of that. I'm going to have a little bit of the white. I'm actually going to pull over the lavender too, just because I think I can use some across the bridge of her nose to create a little bit more depth. All right, these are the finishing touches on the baby, the ones that really make the baby look finally alive. She looks really nice now, um, but these last details will be the ones that really set them apart. Um, okay, so I'm going to get my detail painting brush out. This one is one I got from Bountiful Baby. I didn't trim it at all. I think the markings have been rubbed off of it just because that's what happens. Um, I'm going to start with her nose area. Her head doesn't want to stay pointing up at you. With the first step, I'm going to do a little bit of this purple. Anna, fetch me the purple on your table. This one's all dried up. A little bit of this purple, which is the same as that purple, but actually there. Um, I'll have my purple blending brush. I'm just here to blend this and then I'm going to bring my paintbrush out and use what's on the brush. Pull it out of the way. Um, this I'm going to just tap across her nose and right at the top of her eyelids. And with a purple blush brush blender, I'm just going to gently tap those colors in so that they blend out so there's not just a raccoon eyes on this baby. That created a nice, it's very subtle, but it's there. I'm going to come back in with my purple. I'm going to do a little bit around each of her nostrils. Okay, so I think I'm done with my purple. I'm going to set that aside. Next, I'm going to come in with my yellow. Stay put. This is the yellow ochre. Um, my yellow blending brush. Or my yellow mixing brush. My yellow blending brush. Stay put, baby. All right, again, I'm going to mix the paint and then kind of wring out the brush so it's semi-dryish, so it's not putting on a ton of moisture when I do this. I'm going to gently tap across the top of her nose. And you can kind of see it goes on not in one big stripe, but rather in almost like a model. With my blender, I'm blending this down a little bit. When you're reborn, all of a sudden, everything, every tiny fuzzy hair in the whole atmosphere of your room will find their way onto your wet paint. It's like inevitable. All right. So that gives it a little more newborny, but still peaches and cream look. I'm not going to put my yellow away, I'm just going to push it out, out of the way for a minute while I do some more micro details. Now I'm going to open up my red, which is my super red, my watery red that I do the modeling and stuff with for her. Tip it up on the side. I only want a very light color on this. And I, again, want my brush not to be super wet. 
Now I'm going to come in with microfacial details, such as the itty bitty eyelid blood veins. And it might take us a couple of attempts at this, depending upon how these dry. If they dry in a way that makes it so you can actually still see them, then you'll be able to um, leave it as one layer and not come back. I can see that it's not going to probably stay there after it dries. It disappears right into the vinyl. Let's see if I can get a little more color on there without getting it too bright. And I want these to be really tiny, so I'm just trying to use itty bitty sections of hair on this brush. And I can see my under veins, so I'm going to kind of go over the top of them. Turning off my phone so it doesn't keep dinging. I'm going to follow them down and that will kind of help bring them out a little bit and make them look kind of a purpley color and not just totally blue. Let's see if I can stay right on top of her. This is some tricky stuff, trying to make sure everything's in view. Um, I'm going to do a couple of veins on the inner ear. Going over these ones a couple times just to make sure they stay put. Keep in mind when you're doing veins that you don't make it um, straight lines. Veins are wiggly squiggly little things that make their own way where they want to go and not giant straight lines. And I've already gone over these little veins with the blue. So again, I'm going over the top of my blue with the red to make them, bring them back out a little bit and make them kind of a purpley color. I'm gonna give her a couple of little micro veins on her face. This side keeps disappearing. I might have to thicken up my paint a tiny bit just so I can only have to do this one more time rather than over and over and over. This is better. Um, I just added a little bit of the paint from the lid in it so that it's not so thin and watery, so it will stay put. I don't want these to stick out like bright red things. They just want to be very subtle and kind of behind the scenes yet visible. These are the tiny micro details that really make your work hard to believe it's not real. You don't really have to dip the brush too much when you're doing this color. For some reason, it really just keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. And it doesn't really 
disappear off your brush for a good while. This is where you can also give a baby a uh, birthmark if you want it or a blemish. Um, she actually has a tiny little mark right here that looks like a baby little zit and there's another one right there next to it. So I'm going to just touch one of those and make it a little bit more um, visible and we'll give her one over here. These will be followed up with a little bit of milia just to give her um, a titch more detail or titch more realism. And we'll give her one down here on her chin, a little baby zitty. These are the things that photographers edit off their baby and reborn artists edit onto their baby so that they can make them look as real as possible. This one's a little bit dark, so I'm going to touch it just a bit to get it back down. And if your brush is too big for this, it's actually probably going to damage the effect. You don't want giant monster sized veins affecting your baby. These ones keep disappearing so I'm going to go over them with this batch of attempt. I think those will actually stay put this time. The sides disappeared again. It's strange that some colors actually lighten as they dry and some colors brighten as they dry. It's, it's a bit bizarre and I'm not entirely sure what the deal is with it and why what some colors do it and some don't. Whites get brighter and reds kind of sink in. Purples kind of sink in. Tiny squirrely veins on the cheek. Just a tiny. I'm only using the tip of like two or three hairs on this particular step. Okay, so those are my veins or my micro veins. The last thing I'm going to do, well one of the last things I'm going to do, but this is the last area I'm going to work on. I'm going to give her some baby milia, which is like the, they're not really zits, it's just kind of like a white texture underneath the several top layers of skin. Um, to do this, I'm going to need the white, the cream that I did for nail tips again. i zoom this out so you can see my work area. I'm going to use this tool that I use for sculpting. It's kind of just like a pointy straight, almost like an awl. It's just a straight pokey thing that comes down to a really sharp point so you don't want to misplace it and step on it. Alright, um, I'm going to add a little bit of moisture to my cream. It's semi-moist already because I just use it for tips. Um, but I'm going to take my tiny brush I'm going to do this zoomed out and then I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing up close. Um, so I'm going to take my brush or my pointy thing 
and then I'm going to poke the stuff, just gently poke it, just to get some paint right on the tip. And now I'm going to zoom in, put a nose in the middle of the view so you can see. And now I'm going to put 